Okay, welcome back. Um, I'm really looking forward to this episode. We've been trying to make this happen for a while, haven't we? Cold We've got my good mate in, Nick Manners, former pro boxer, hey, former pro boxer, trainer of world champions, um, just all around great guy. Uh, Nick, how are you, mate? We've been wanting to do this for a long time, haven't we? Liam, thank you very much. Listen, <laughs> you know what it is? It's not only just, I've always wanted to say well done. Yeah. Well done. Appreciate yeah, I mean, it. That comes first and foremost. I've known you a long time. Known you since known you before you. I knew you before you knew your dad. Mm. You know what I mean. So, and I've watched you grow up, and I've seen you come from our environment, and lift yourself out of that. Ignore a lot of things that was going on in your quest to be a world champion. You know what? Well, I mentioned this sort of quite a lot. Um, where me and you are from, we're off. Well, I, I, everyone will have heard me mention before, whether it's on my Instagram, post-fight interviews, on here, they will have heard me mention LS9. And we're all from around that rough area, aren't we? Do you know what mm. I mean? Mm. It's a hotbed for fighters, is Lee's like, but like you were just mentioning there, there's a lot of like rough goings on around there. Mm. I'm sure we're going to get into it with with your story here because I think it's fair to say you've had a pretty eventful life, mate, haven't you? It's been all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's been all right. It's been fun. Yeah, so like, like, as mentioned, right, yeah. let's start... Way back when, um, you obviously you were a pro boxer. You had uh, 17 professional fights. You've gone mm. on to train world champions and stuff. Let's pull it back. Um, let's talk about your early life, mate, because like we said, it's, it's, a, it's a bit rough and ready growing up in this area, Leeds, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And uh, there's been a lot of eventful going on. How did you find boxing? Was were you, was it early? Did it Was that what? Because no. of the, the fighting environment in LS9 no. or anything like that? No. You know what? I'll, tell you, I'll be honest with you. Um, I was locked up. Mm. I was locked up and... Um, I was in Durham and I'd had a bit of a, when I said I'd had a, had a bit of a rough time, I got a two and a half year sentence. What was that I, for, if you don't mind me asking? Um, it was about, for a robbery. Yeah. Um, let me just say first and foremost, Liam, I was a shit crook, mate. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fucking terrible. <laughs> On, no, listen, think about it. Look at this. I could never have an alibi because I was surrounded by, just say, for example, there's a group of 50 white fellas with one black guy <laughs> yeah. and something goes off. Hmm. Yeah. You want me? Yeah. You want me? Yeah. You fucking what? You want me? <laughs> <laughs> You're the only black fella in the state. So all right, then fair enough. So um, I tried the crooking, crooking, crooking. I want that. I want clever enough. You know what I mean? And I want. Um, I couldn't hide enough. I'm yeah. six foot tall. I'm black. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, <laughs> yeah. anywhere like, around Leeds Nine in them days. I'm about to say, I'm about to say, there are not many black guys around LS Nine in them days. Well, yeah, yeah, not loud like me as well. Yeah, and I didn't. Yeah. I'd, with all due respect, I didn't hide. I like to go with cherry tree. Um, Eber, yeah. Plasterers, Fish Up, Hope. Mm. Um, all oh, classic guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great st the stuff. Listen, you didn't have to dress up, did you? Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> you didn't have no clothes. Then. You know, but it's right to yeah. a degree. Um, but there were places where we all, I'd like to think, were secure. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, we my dad knew. used to go to all them yeah. guys. And I yeah, you and your friends knew. with my dad and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, Albert, yeah, yeah. Albert, yeah. fucking <laughs> hell, nightmare. <laughs> you, <you're laughs> so, good fella, yeah. good fella, <laughs> nightmare. You know what I mean? Um, but, but somebody who you're happy to back in them, like, don't get me wrong, I'm also proud of your dad. Yeah. Because your dad totally turned it, flipped the script. Mm. You know, I'll give credit to, if you don't mind me saying, Tracy. Yeah, yeah, tell you what, mate. Yeah, I've got to give her credit. Put, she's... I put with some shit back in the day. <laughs> Say no. But, you know what I mean? But with respect, Joe, yeah. Albert and your mum, I've got a lot of respect for because they've held on to that marriage. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And, you know, through thick and thin, done. Yeah, and they've been great, great parents and role models for yeah. me as well. So, yeah, yeah 100%. Mate. I love it. I love yeah. it when I see them. And there's a lot of people that I see from... Um, my past, um, whether it's Eber Gardens, Lincoln Green, Gipton, whichever. And you know what? There's some of them that I really, truly admire. And I'd, I admire them because I came from a broken home. A lot of people came from a broken home. And we used to look and kids like yourself, kids like Peter Sorby and things like that who had parents, used to admire them and sort of like hope. And I used to hope that they'd stick together mm. because at least somebody did. You know that kind of thing? Yeah. So when yeah. I seen... Alb and Tracy, Sam and Margaret, such and such and such and such. You like that? You give hope for love. Yeah. You know that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. All you see, to a degree, all you see, broken homes, um, sort of like birds getting pregnant, yeah. fellas gone. And, and sometimes that it's a big from, circle, yeah. isn't it? It yeah. keeps happening, keeps happening. Whereas you see some hopes and some beacons of light, let's call them, and you go, that's how you do it. You stick together, you get a job you fuck off all your mates, so to speak, and make sure that your family's all right. Yeah. And you go, fair enough, little role models, you know Agreed, what I mean? Mate. So, fair play. So, you, like I say, you got caught up in that uh, that crook life. So, yeah. how old were you when you did this this, this prison sentence then? I was, um, 18. 18. 18, And that's yeah. where you found boxing, were it in, in yeah. prison? Well, I was in there, and to be fair, um, let's just say it as it is, um, you've got to be smart in that prison. And the thing is, do you remember Scum? 
Yeah, the Phil, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm the well, daddy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, everybody of my generation saw that film. Yeah. And if you didn't take all out of that film, you would have doiled them. Around that, you must have seen some shit in there around that yeah. time, didn't you? Yeah, it was fucking yeah. rough, mate. Rough, rough, yeah, rough. And I'll tell you, this is why, one of the reasons why I'm so invested in helping the kids. Because I say, and I see a lot of kids, and I see them and I just don't think that they've got the the minerals that we had to have. Yeah. And it was fucking rough. Yeah. Rough. Yeah. Um, even when I'm thinking about it now, I'm thinking, I don't even know how to, how how much I want to disclose because I wouldn't like to think that people are exposed. To, people are exposed to all sorts, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But um, I've seen kids bullying, extreme bullying, and it's not good. Yeah. And yeah. there's kids out here who I see who think, who are thinking that they're a bit of all that. Mm. And I, I straight away, I'm saying, I say to him, listen, just remember something. When you get sentenced, you get sentenced as an individual. So yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. when you go in there, you might not be with your mates. Yeah. You might end up somewhere sh far away from your mates. So you've got to stand alone. Mm. So if you've got to stand alone, you make sure you can stand alone. Because I'll tell you something, when you're crying in yeah. prison, People thrive on tears, yeah. mate. I'll worry for you going in there. And obviously, you're a big guy, six foot two, obviously a black guy as well. No, like no, no. Let's there. not fuck about <laughs> Listen, I didn't realise, you know, yeah. for years. I never looked at mirror. I just thought, ooh, I'm all right, me. Yeah. I was like a fucking really? stick of licorice. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I went in there. First time I ever got locked up, I'll tell you what. And, it, and this isn't about glorifying getting locked up. Yeah. This is just as it is. Um, first time I got locked up, what they used to do back in them days, the, you'd have Bridewell. Yeah. With town Hall. And you get thrown in there and you have to wait till week, wait over at weekend and that jam on jam mashed potato and all sorts and you get just thrown in with all the cons and drunks yeah, and yeah. whatever's gone on the weekend, you're in the middle of them. Yeah. And as as a don't get me wrong, we're from Leeds Nine and that sort of sixteen, we're like that, go fuck you. You know what I mean? Um and the, they'll try little things like, Oh, give us a cig. And be like, No, 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 get your own. And you used to be able to get stuff in Kentucky, you'd get all sorts of food and that. They could bring it in. Yeah. So you'd have your cigs and you'd have your bits and mouths and, and You'd be sharing with your mates and making sure your mates are all right. If you've got bail, boom, you give it to your pals and that and this, that and the other. And sometimes you get other people who'd look at you and think, oh, they're young and green. We'll have a little bit of them. Mm. And they'd say, oh, um, here's one of them, son. Now, my initial, like, go fuck off. Yeah. Just defensive. Yeah. No, no, no. Because if I say, yeah, I don't even know you. Why am I, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It was very, it's very, very Give someone an inch, they're going to take a mile yeah. out of here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I went in Armley and I, I, I saw myself at Mirror. And I actually realised that I was like a yeah. stick. Um, and I just, for the first three months, you know what? I realised that it's dog eat dog. And I'll tell you something, with me being tall, if if any of them can get one over on me, they'll put the chest out, yeah. the, the big fella. And I was only tall, so I just stayed and I just put on a three months <laughs> press-ups, pull-ups, squats. I got the, um, you know, the um, mattress. Yeah, yeah. I'd roll the mattress up, you know, the jumper. Yeah, I'd put this body of the jumper over the top of it. I'd use the arms to tie, turn it upside down, put another one, and I'd be kind of. I'd say to the lad, whoever's in selling that, I'd say, "Oh, you don't fancy, you don't fancy earning half ounce of back here." Yeah. And they go, "What? What do I have to do? Just hold." And I'd say, "Just hold that bag while I, just hold that bag while I train on the night time." Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. F nice. Improvisation, mate. For do. Yeah, improvisation, though, mate. Me, man, you know what? You need something to train like. You need a fucking... Listen. I was speaking to her. We had a... Uh, that poor fucker were in corner for hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, had a, we had a bare knuckle boxer on. I sent you the clip of him, Luke. Yeah. yeah so yeah. he was saying, man, he was in prison. He used to make his mate put flip-flops on his hands for pads. <laughs> no, no. Well, you know what I did? Psychologically. Yeah. And it's a bit cold and that, you know what I mean? But I knew I had to survive. Yeah. Well, honestly, I knew I had to survive. But I also knew I had to survive with a little bit of something so that when I came out, I still had something of me. Because yeah. you can survive in there and you can be a proper shit bag, yeah. come out weak and fraud. But especially like in somewhere like Armley, because for anyone who doesn't know, Armley's the prison in Leeds oh. and it's a fucking app. It's bad, isn't it? It's bad, isn't it, Nick? Yeah, it's so horrible, bad. Horrible, horrible, yeah. horrible, horrible. I didn't realise, though, that um, I'd made a little bit of an impact amongst my lads my age. Mm. But what it was, was that because my first remand and that I was in Armley, Straight away, I were in with some old heads. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, KD. Mm. Compton. Yeah. Errol Shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keith, yeah. T, yeah, yeah. yeah. T, <laughs> I, I fucking still can't do names. I can never get, no. <laughs> yeah. It's cold. It's like never yeah. names. No, no, no. Yeah, clues. Yeah. TC. Um, Tommy. Mm. His mate. Yeah, yeah. Great fellas. KC. Kev. 
another one. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, I'd say as they were all in Armley. So I've grown up with them since I was a kid. Um, they were all at the court here and mm. that, you know what I mean? And you'd look up to KC, uh, KD and that, you know what I mean? So when I went in there, I had an obligation to myself not to let him down, not to let myself down, not to let Lee's nine down yeah. and not to let the lads down to a degree. And it wasn't that I was doing it for them, but I was doing it for me and for the fact that I've got my life to live. And you know something? Sometimes there's things that you can do, you only have to do them once, it'll fucking ruin you for life. Yeah. 100% man you'll be a grass once yeah. you're a grass for life yeah. nonce once nonce for life rapist once rapist for life yep. snitch snitch for it life it can take you years and years and years to build yourself into something special in about 30 seconds to fucking blow it so yeah you're right 100% there. so mm. sometimes you've got to now what I've always done is I always thought to myself um, I'm not glorifying it nothing like that but as a kid um, because we were always naughty and getting into the bits and bobs I was always told you can end up in jail you you'll end up in jail you end up in jail you so, you know, at some point I, psycho I psychologically went like that to myself, well, if I'm really going to end up in jail, I better get my mind ready for it. Yeah. Because I'll tell you something. So I've accepted it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's not going to be a surprise if I do, because this is what I'm into. You know, like, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. Yeah. And it was like, okay, then I'm doing the time. So if I get caught, I better be prepared to do it. So when I got caught, I've ended up, um, ended up on remand doing me what's it called my press ups and that building up and then um, you used to get you get challenges and that because um, people are just they're, they're just testing out there yeah. and they want to find out and um, I used to, I, I just thought do you remember what's it called scum yeah and it went where's your tool yeah what, what fucking, fucking tool, tool? Yeah, this yeah. fucking tool I'm like alright right. so when he asked what tool bang him yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't fucking wait for no a conversation no no, no. Yeah, done yeah. done and um, I'm not Listen, I'm 56 years old now, you know what I mean? I don't, I'm not particularly proud of that episode of my life, but you know something, I'm happy that I got through yeah. and I survived it because um, in reality, I didn't come out as a victim, Liam. Yeah, yeah. I didn't come out, nah, 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 I haven't got time for that. Mm. I've got fuck all anyway. You're not going to take that little bit that I've got left. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's that'll do me. And if you, if you, know, you know me, yeah. I think I'd like to think that I've been consistent over these years. Yeah, well, you've you know took all I mean? that stuff that happened to you there, and you like, like you said, you're it, you're helping other people. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, turn their shit around with that now, aren't you? So yeah. it's like it's maybe a blessing you could call it with all the other people you're going to help from it. Yeah, to a degree. I know I can't yeah. save the world and that, but yeah. you know what it is? Um, if I can't, if I can't rule the world, I might as well be of benefit. To yeah, it. of course, man. That's nice, is that? Yeah, no, no, say that again. Yeah. <laughs> if I can't rule the world, I'm going to be of benefit. To like it, that, you mate. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You've got out of prison. How mm -hmm. old are you now? 20 ish? Is this where you started? 1920. Mm, yeah. yeah, 20. So, where did boxing start from here then? Because obviously, to... obviously, you've got your, your brothers and stuff Colin. as well. They're, yeah, you've yeah. got a big sporting family, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. They were all yeah. incredible athletes. I call him. Yeah. Fantastic. Unbelievable. Ricky, unbelievable athlete. You know Colin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the I remember some of the training sessions he used to do back in the day. Some of my friends used to go do them and they'd be fucked for like three days after them, mate. Listen, we should have a. You know what it is? That. Liam, we should have a thriving gym yeah and we have got a thriving gym but we should be bursting yeah. but you know what they're scared yeah i bet man they know they are some people say oh no you're not a, training yeah some of my mates got ptsd from some of these sessions listen, mate, i'm telling you listen we go down there and that and um, like i said uh, when i first got the gym after i finished boxing well diverse but um people i've got i've had plenty of people come and say oh can i come down to the gym and um, help you coach so what makes you think I need help? Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Yeah, what makes you think I need help? I say, I'll tell you what it is. Um, with all due respect and no disrespect, there's only one person who I'd coach with mm. on that level there. And um, that's not to discount any other coaches. Yeah. That. What I'm saying is for our gym here in Leeds, for me, there's only one other person that I would have as another coach in there. And they were saying, who's that? I say, oh, don't worry. When he comes, he comes. Yeah. And I've had quite a few people come. And you know what I'd say to them? Go sort out your, is it DBS? Yeah, yeah. Go sort your DBS, and that sometimes gives them a nick up, so I'm like, that'll do. Yeah. Um, you know what it was? Ah, Colin. Yeah. And yeah. what I'd done, though, is I set up the gym at Lincoln Green, you know, down yep. just up the road from our Yeah, yeah. So I set it up, and I said to our Colin, at some point in time, if you see me training and being consistent to the standard that is acceptable to you, come on board, our kid. Mm. Come on board. And with all due respect, I've always tried to prove stuff to our Colin. Our yeah. Colin's a top He's yeah, a standard. Yeah. He's Liam. I've only met Colin a few times. Liam, he's yeah. my hero, mate. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They say, who's your sporting hero? Ah, Colin. Yeah. Who's your in-life hero? Ah, Colin. Yeah. He's a cracking fella. Honest to God, he's a cracking fella. Um, I don't mind when everybody says to me, 
Your Collins, all right. Your Collins, good one. Yeah. See, that's right. I'll yeah. keep you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep you on your toes. Our Collins a good guy. I'd rather keep you guessing. But you know what it is? Our Collins is a fantastic man and a fantastic human being. Mm. Just got to say that. Yeah. No, he is. Yeah, yeah, good no, fella. Yeah. I've heard nothing but good things. Yeah, he's like, brilliant. Yeah. He's brilliant. Like I said, I've only met him a few times myself, but everything I do here, other than he's. Remember friends going, he fucking killed me in that circuit. Yeah. But yeah, you want to see him? Top guy. See, you want to see body on him now? He's still chiseled. chiseled. Listen, yeah. have you seen Simpsons? Yeah. Seen Caretaker? Yeah, where he rips him. his head yeah. Him. him. Yeah. I'm saying to him all the time, say, Colin, you're not right in head, you. you. say, what do you mean? Say, Colin, we fucking retired 20 years ago. You know, <laughs> in your training, like we still do. He did this, um, it's in Armthorpe or something like that, or where they do this coal run. Coal, yeah. coal. You put 50 kilo of coal on your back and run half a mile or something, or a mile. Yeah, he's, he's an incredible athlete. From, I've, heard, I've heard, like, Brilliant. all I've heard about everything he's like, I'll, fit and strong and tough and mentally strong he is you know, when he does his people, workouts a lot of people would benefit listen i know for a fact that people benefit from my work right 100 percent. i know for a f i know that for a fact yeah i'll give you an extra 10 percent. you know what i mean colin ooh, mm. colin takes it to another level yeah another level and right go on let's pull this back then so your to your boxing career yeah. how, when how, how did it start how did you get into it what gym were you at where okay. were you at i'll tell you how it went i'll tell you how it went no no holes bad yeah. goes to st patrick's um gets out of um durham goes to st patrick's meets a fella called terry o'neill mm. mick ryan god bless him he's passed on fred miglin and barry those harry Ayers, right god bless him so I've gone in there. So you know what it is? Back in them days, you know what they'd do? You could walk off, walking off the street in high heels, you know, stilettos and that, and mm. um, suspenders, and they'd throw you a pair of gloves and go, yeah, have a spa. <laughs> Get straight in. Yeah, and you're straight like... Straight in deep end. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I'd spent a little bit of time contemplating whether I'm going to box and this, that, and the other. So I'm thinking, right, who's a good trainer? Frank Bruno. Who's a good hitter? Tommy Ernes. Who do I look like? Tommy Ernst, skinny legs, yeah. Big, yeah, skinny yeah. legs, big top. Every time he gets it, it with a shot, his legs shiver, shiver. That'll do me, Tommy Ernst. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I loved him. You know what I mean? So next thing you know, I've gone in there, and I'll tell you what. On the first day that I went in there, it was about quarter to seven. Lads have started um, warming up and that, and there were Tony Massey and Henry Wharton in the mm. ring. I didn't know him, never seen him before in my life. So Terry started giving me the, all the blarney and that. Oh, yeah. Yo, you think you can have a go? And I'm still full of prison spunk, you know, yeah, like, yeah. like attitude and that. Like, yeah, yeah, I'll fucking have a go with these. Anyway, but not in a cocky way, but just confident, you know yeah. what I mean? And I said, I'll tell you what. He says, oh, do you fancy a spa then? So I'll tell you what you do. You treat me with respect. All I know about boxing is Rocky. Yeah. I want you to be my Mickey and I'll be your Rocky. But treat me with respect. Tell you what. Them two boxers in there. There's one of them there that won't be box. He won't spar with me after two weeks. In two weeks' time, he'll never spar with me again. Mm. That other one there, I see something in him. I don't mind following him in the gym. There's something about him. Who was that? Henry. Henry. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even know, but I went. Something. About, you know, I'll tell you what it was. He looked me in the eye, mm. and when he looked me in the eye, you could just yeah, you seen that yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, right, yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know right, you. Yeah. And then next thing you know, it works out that we're both born on exactly the same day, one mm. year apart, oh, right, 23rd, yeah. 11th. And I thought, and um, I thought, right. So anyway, in fact, two just weeks in case later, any of the listeners might show Henry Wharton, is go Google him. Oh, he was one Google of Yorkshire's well, Leeds, Oof. Leeds and York. He was an incredible athlete. One, he had some great fights. You can yeah. watch him fight with Chris Eubank and them, them fights. Chris he was, Eubank, he was a warrior, wasn't he? Henry. Yeah. He was yeah, a hard listen, man. People ask me. Pe people have asked me, who's the best fighter that I've been in with? And I've been in with quite a few. Obviously, I've been, I've, sp I've sparred Kalazagi, I've boxed Kalazagi, I've been in and around um, Eubanks, I've sparred Eubanks mm. and that. Um, I've done, and I'm not saying it like I'm the big I am, I'm just giving it as it is. Yeah. Um, your little Naz, Naz was exceptional. Yeah. Except Naz was like that and beat up everybody. Yeah. And people don't believe it. Um, Bomber Graham, Johnny Nelson, Fidel Castro Smith, Graciano Rossigini, Henry And he's all guys who sparred then all yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a good yeah, resume. Good. Listen, that. like, yeah, listen yeah. that's where my confidence comes from. Yeah, I bet you know, No, honestly, you know yourself at the end of the day, and I said to the lads in the gym, listen, if you go spar somebody, you don't have to kill each other, but you have to experience it. Yeah. And then once you've stepped in the water, you realise that it's not that hot. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You can wash. How hard did Bomber Graham it just... Listen, that little I, shit. I, that just Listen, into me head then, I'm yeah. glad you said that. Because yeah. a lot of people said that he couldn't hit. And I'll tell you what it is, he hit me. 
and it hit me and he had these yellow horse hair gloves on. Yeah. Um, and I'd gone over there and what had happened is, it, it had happened by accident actually. I didn't realise, I'd never heard of body sparring. Mm. So anyway, so they put you all in the ring and you might be one in each corner. The next thing you know, I've gone like that. And what they do to make you not be nervous, they go, introduce yourself. So they do this thing where they do this little dance and a backflip or something like that. Backflip me, <laughs> and I end up crippled. Yeah. <laughs> um, they do this backflip and that, and they'll go, I'm not seeing my mid. It is at Ingalls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then Johnny will be like, uh, eh, I'm Johnny Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> so if you remember now, there's a line there. They've all got like feminine voices, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, that. all right. So I was always a bit of a cocky lad in that. And <laughs> listen, Leeds, Leeds for us was the capital of Yorkshire. Yeah. Right, we and that's no disrespect to all the rest of the little villages around us, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Sheffield, Bradford, all them villages. Um, we were the big city, yeah. the big smoke. Still are. Yeah. Yeah. Goes without doubt. Yeah. So next thing you know, I've gone in there and I've got a fucking dickhead out. I've got corn road in there. Yeah. Yeah, corn <laughs> ponytail and all. It looks right, swat. You know? <laughs> when I look at it now, I'm like, that, you knobhead. <laughs> so I'm like that. I've gone in there and I've gone, so I'm thinking, they're doing backflips, this, that and the other. So I'm like that, right then. Gun it front, gun it centre. I'm Nicky Manners. I'm from Leeds, and I'm here to put some bass in all of your voices. <laughs> you know, you've got some all squeaking. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. fucking hell. Anyway, I got knocked fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By all of them. But I've gone out, and um, they've gone, right then, Nicky, bummer. So I've gone out, and I've gone, right then, boom, boom, boom. And he's gone, boom, he's hit me in chest. I thought, Phew. And I've gone, and I've given him a little shot on the chin. Yeah. And they've gone, no, 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 no. Just body sparring. Yeah. I thought, ooh, <laughs> shit. I don't really do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I say I don't really do that, I don't really hit to body because I've got big long arms, I'll yeah. keep you off. But to get to body, let me tell you something, you know, for a tall man to learn to body punch, mm. he's got to go through shit, you know. Yeah, yeah, 100%. That man. learning process yeah. is not easy. And um, what I used to like to do is like, give them three or four quick shots to the head. Yeah. They put their hands up and then get one or two shots off and fuck off. You know, I mean, yeah. excuse my language because that, listen, to learn the art of infighting and body punching, it's not easy yeah, at all. Especially you've got to be on point. Yeah, 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 be on point. Yeah. Anyway, so next thing you know, all of a sudden, ooh, we can't hit him, hit him in the head. No. And he proceeded to give me a beating. Mm. But it was done with love and it was nice, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we're a really, really good fella. And the re excuse me, they really made me feel welcome over there. But they give me some licks and that, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. we all learned and it was a really, listen, cracking you, you, environment. You, but look at that, Bob Graham. Johnny, Johnny Nelson, Nelson, world champion. Yeah. Nas, another world all champion. Nas, Ryan Nas, Rhodes, Nas all Nas probably them. one of the, the greatest Paul British Jones. fighters ever, wanted. not you know what I mean? I've so. put him, I've got to put three. That, but then again, you know what we've got, what we also make um, a mistake of doing sometimes? I think I don't like the term greatest fighter ever. Yeah. In Because I think that you can have a greatest fighter for a period. Yeah. Yeah, an yeah, era. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I think it's unfair to say that Joe Kalazagi is the best UK fighter ever, when you've had so many different fighters in certain eras yeah, that have the, the, actually... the sport evolves a little evolves, bit in time, it does, evolves, yeah. and training time, evolves. And, training, yeah. promotional, course, and then sometimes yeah. they'll turn around yeah, and correct. say, well, let's avoid him to go there and get the big prize, yeah. you know, that thing's... So I'd say that um, Joe was probably one of the greatest of his generation. Yeah. Naz of his, Lennox of his, you know, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So th we've had some great fighters come across, but we've had them across different... Mm -hmm. um, the time period, time period yeah, yeah. Really let's go to to joe then because you were saying you 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 sparred him as yeah. well as fought him yeah in fact let's pull it right back were your first amateur fight were you did you fight amateur or did you go straight pro what? Amateur, i had 17 amateur fights 70 oh, so seven no fucking 70 you're oh, crazy right. i'm not that fucking yeah. crazy <laughs> 70 fucking fights. seven amateur S seven no 17 17 right. 17 amateur 17 pro right cool yeah so, so in, in amateur really that's not that many before going pro is it because no. a lot of people will really rack the numbers yeah fuck all listen what the, crazy yeah it's good for experience and that longevity if yeah. you do it from a youngster yeah but if you're doing it as a man you might as well fight as a man yeah fight's a fight yeah you know yeah, what i mean true. and i just thought to myself from my first ones i would just try to get him out of there mate because i was scared to fucking death yeah <laughs> no it, when i say scared it, it, to it, death in amateur yeah amateur i'm pro yeah yeah I'm, talk to me about that first fight then how did it come around and now how, how did, did did you always want to fight from the first day you went to that gym or were it just something oh, for, I'm gonna fight. you know Listen, what i'm good at this i'm, I'm gonna fight no i was yeah. in prison yeah and um what happened was um I got two and a half a year and I went to 13 different jails and um, each one of them would have fight. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, because I've got a bit of a mouth on me, um, from day one, they put me in there. They shouldn't have put me in fucking Armley because in Armley, we don't call them sir, we call them boss. Yeah. And then from Armley, they went sent you to a YC and, you know, you've custody centre mm. and they'd say, right, call me sir. 
All right, sir, boss. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, my mindset was already there. And I'd seen the treatment that the cons, that the cons got from the prison officers. And then I saw the treatment that the cons, were, that the YCs were getting from the prison officers. And I was like, ah, you won't be doing that to me. Yeah. You won't be doing that. And I don't mean it, I'm not saying I'm a big one or nothing like that. But I always said to them, listen, I'm interested in one shot. Say what? I'm inter- Listen, if I can get one shot on anybody, I'm happy at yeah. that because you'll remember it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Is that how you saw your, your fighting then? You were, were you always looking to KO, looking for that one shot? Yeah. I was looking for yeah, KO. Yeah. You know, I, mean? I was too scared because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I was, I was listening to um, a, f- a podcast of yours today with mm. a nutritionist. Yeah. Pete, Pete Miller, that one. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Very knowledgeable guy. Brilliant. Very, yeah. It just pinged so many things in my head because uh, we didn't train. We didn't, sorry, we trained, but we didn't nourish ourselves properly. <laughs> Same like when I was coming up, oh, like, I mentioned in that podcast, we I, just had no clue. Didn't we, have didn't an have idea. Any, we didn't have access to all the knowledge. You know, we made Sport weight. science and everything. You know, we made weight. Bin liner on. Starved. Yeah, star- bin yeah, yeah. liner. Bin, bin liner eat. not eating. Yeah, yeah, same. And yeah. you're like, Jesus Christ. And <laughs> listen, I used to wonder. I used to wonder. You know something? The last two fights of my career, I did nutritionist. Yeah. And I felt fantastic. I felt like Evander Holyfield. Yeah. And I did say that I'm, I did say that I'm going to reinvent myself. As Evander Holyfield, mm. and they go, what do you mean? I say, well, I like how he boxes, he moves, and da 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 da. And for my last two fights, I actually boxed how I wanted to box. Yeah. My last two, the previous ones, it were just panic and fight, and yeah. listen, put some pressure on, and hope that a little, a, tight, a slight bit of intimidation might work. Um, and I didn't mean to intimidate, but I just think, right, say fuck all. I'm yeah. not going to mouth off or nothing like that. Just look at him. See if he looks at me abs. You know, like look at me, look at me top half. Please don't look at my legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my first fight, I had it after three months training. It's not a long time in really, is it? Yeah. Like, man, listen, listen I'll tell you in. something straight. Terry O'Neill and that, I think what they did is they went, got some gob on him. Mm. Let's see if Let's he can see back, if he it. back it. Yeah, Which yeah, is fair yeah, enough. Yeah. So a boxing it were a Yorkshire Select versus Dublin Select, Queen's Hotel. Mm. Lads turned around and told me to come out of room. It's a nice little venue at Queen's Hotel. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I was, I was farting. I was shitting myself that much. I was farting, 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 farting. I stunk my changing room and they were like, come on, you've got to get out. And they put me in another room because I was fucking, <laughs> really? yeah, I was stinking. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was shitting myself. But one thing I've always, um, I don't know about you, but you do you know when you're ready? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you when I know I'm ready. My shit turns wet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, um, not um, laxative, like diarrhea. Yeah. Diarrhea, yeah. bang. My body gets rid of everything, and then yeah. all of a sudden, I'm on. Yeah. I'll tell you something. Every time I've been like that, knockout, bang, done. Yeah. I'm happy. You know what I mean? When it's not, I'm like, mm. what have I not done? Well, to be fair, I, I, I said this before, like, you fight your best when you're full of adrenaline and you're nervous and you're scared because you're that bit sharper, you're that yeah. bit more switched oh. on. I've had fights where I want nervous and switched on, and I thought, shit, because I want on edge, and, mm. like, you need to have that fear. Because if you haven't got that little bit of fear and you go in there, like, just fucking like a daisical. 100%. Yep. I think it, um, I had a, um, I'm not, I don't like to say something just because something, but I boxed a kid called Tony Booth. And we boxed the eight round draw. Booth is well known, really yeah, well yeah. known. And he boxed a lot of people. But uh, Michael Gale was supposed to box him. But Michael Gale pulled out with um, an ankle injury. So they were going to bring Delroy Wall, a kid from Manchester, to top the bill. So I was like, what do you mean? Well, we'll, we'll get another top of the bill. I said, well, why? I said, well, did it? I said, well, I'll tell you, I'll fight Tony. I said, um, I'm 20 odd years old. I've got hairs around my bollocks and that. Um, it's only a fight. I'll know where I am. So yeah. like, ah, he's eighteen months ahead of. He's eighteen months ahead of you. Mm. You can't have a man coming to Leeds to um, top the bill. Nah, you know what I mean. So anyway, we were at Jewsbury actually. Um, you can't have a man topping our bill. It was supposed to be a Leeds bill. So, so I'll fight him. I went, Are you sure? I went, yeah, I'll fight him. Um, so I ended up boxing Tony Booth. And two minutes before, um, I've, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And I'm telling you now, I am convinced, and I know I'd have stopped him. Yeah. Two minutes before I come in. Terry's coming, he's gone, oh, you'll blow this fella away in two minutes, I mean, two rounds. And you know what? <sighs> yeah. Flat. Yeah. Well, I, well, why am I fighting him then if I'm, if you know I'm going to beat him? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I just flat. And then that's no excuse for what happened because you know something, I was always a four or five round fighter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I didn't know about condition. I didn't know how to save myself and yeah. things like that. And that's no excuse because at the end of the day, I'll always say this as well. I was never a dedicated fighter. Mm. I never wanted to be a world champion. I never wanted to be a British champion. I never wanted to be this, that, and the other. All I turned around and said was, you know what? Until the fire goes out of me 
and whether it's anger, fire, um, you know what, maybe not being born into a millionaire lifestyle, having to graft and fight and this, that and the other for everything you've got. And we do have them things that make us frustrated and, and you're like, until, and I had that in me. Mm. You know I mean? I was a little bit, I wouldn't say angry, but frustrated. So, and then the certain situations that I get into and I'd snap and I'd be off, you know what I mean? And I needed that out of me. Mm. I needed, and I always said, people, people have a fight at least once a year. You know what I mean? Um, so I might as well, get paid for it because yeah. every time I have my fight on the street I get locked up yeah. and it's no good you know what I mean yeah. so it got to the point where I had that fire in my belly but if you tell me to take a liberty that don't make sense to me Yeah. but if you turn around and say Nick you're in a battle here um, it's down to you mm-hmm. oh fair enough I can go with that you know what I mean because then you have to challenge yourself but if there's nothing if there's no challenge yeah you can't compete, yeah. can you? You don't want to compete. Let's talk about challenges here. So you mentioned earlier that you sparred Joe Calzaghe. You also ended up fighting him as a pro mm-hmm. as well, didn't you? Mm-hmm. And obviously he went on to be absolutely... He was, his one career was ridiculous, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What were it like sparring him first off and then when the fight got announced? I fought him first. Oh, you fought him first? Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes it even better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when he came up for... I remember I watched an interview with Eubank um, and Eubank fought him didn't he I remember mm-hmm. him saying I have never been hit that fast and that many times it was like I was fighting Fucking two people yeah. Listen, yeah, yeah. bang out of order yeah. you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you like that Gee, you're making a cunt of me yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you what it is you know what we're good because I always thought I was fast I yeah. did I always thought myself off fast. I might not have been but I always thought I was fast mm. and other people said I was pretty fast yeah. but you know when you get people who's actually concentrating and dedicated to their craft yeah. and you see how fast and controlled and professional they are you know you might go fast with one hook but you can't get that hook perfectly they do from, yeah. from, from, from time after Battle time yeah. yeah listen i there were times when um, i boxed him now when he boxed me he didn't get a chance to turn around and show his speed and this that and the other because i were like um i don't know i won't say but i'll turn around and say i'd, I'd say i was a worthy opponent for yeah. him at that time yeah so he had a little bit of a challenge mm. and um i was fortunate enough to have caught him with a shot early which made him yeah. angry yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the great thing about him though you know yeah. you whack him and you think yo know your place yeah and it's like no yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're like Fucking hell, well he, he even did that at the highest level didn't he i mean he got dropped off jones in the first round and came yeah. back and put a beating on all him, of didn't them he, didn't all of them jones hopkins dropped him yeah. byron mitchell dropped him yeah. loads of people have dropped him and i'll tell you what is one thing i will turn around and say about him Tremendous heart, yeah, hundred oh, percent. Tough and guy, a good chin. Yeah. And if he ain't got a good chin, he's got fantastic powers of recovery. Yeah, and um, you know something? Because I thought to myself, you know, I thought, I thought I were gonna give him it. You know, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I thought, I thought, I swear to God, I thought, I'm gonna brook him up, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna throw him about. I'm gonna brook him up, and this, that, and the other. And I didn't. Yeah, you know what I mean? When I got in there, I realised that you know something, quality, southpaw as well. Yeah, you know what I mean? And um, with all due respect, um. I'd never say whether I had a good chin or a bad chin. I was fortunate to never be knocked out. Be yeah, stopped. Yeah. Accumula- accumulation you, yeah, of punches yeah, and You knackered. got to stop that fight, but you went out yeah. and stood up and yeah, the referee yeah. stopped you. You yeah, saved well, it I, from yourself because you weren't going to quit. No, yeah, yeah. and um, I don't mean it in a bad way. The yeah. one thing, I, um, that's not being a hero or nothing. One thing I will turn around and say about um, boxing and that, sometimes we go in boxing to see how far we can go. Yeah. And um, from my point of view, the only thing that I'd, I'd have said from my point of view is, um, I know what, at the time, I know what I was intending to do to my opponents. Mm, yeah. So you know what? I'm not going to stop him from having his opportunity yeah. to do what he wants to do to me. Mm. You know what I mean? Because then then it's about, oh, I can do you and knock you and bang you out of the floor and put you out of the ropes and all that. But as soon as I get half a touch, referee's going to, nah, yeah, nah, yeah. do it or give it or get it. And, um, yeah. and I like That's that. a bit of an old school mentality. I like that. A lot of the fighters around that time had that. You yeah. had that mentality, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. Like the warrior mentality. Yeah. That's it. Do you know what I mean? If you're getting a beating, you stand there and you stand take your beating take you know like I mean? a man. Yeah, yeah. Remember when, I'll tell you who I always admired and people slagged him off and I couldn't understand why. And I had the same effect as well. You know Frank Bruno? Mm. Frank Bruno always took his beatings. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, he never got like flatlined, no, did he? Or, no, or never quit. He'd always no, be happened. stood up on yeah. his feet. Trying. And that was his problem, his yeah. fucking legs locked. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know, what, and I've done it myself. I've done it. Um, I boxed a kid called Ali Forbes. Mm. And um, don't get me wrong, I didn't train or nothing like that. I was scandalous. Yeah. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't blues night before. You know I, mean? I was. No, I really? was. Max's blues, yeah. And the poster <laughs> was behind me, and somebody's gone like that. Nick, are you boxing? Yeah, 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 man. Don't worry about that. It's fucking tomorrow. <laughs> 
Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Worry. yeah, but you know what I'd done? They said, um, you know when it says to be arranged? I thought they were going to get me somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're just going to flatten. Yeah, I yeah, thought to be arranged. That means that um, yeah. must be a last minute. Next thing you know, they bought Ali Forbes. <laughs> and I didn't, well, I didn't know. I didn't know Ali Forbes yeah. and that. But I knew, of Ali, I knew of Ali Forbes, but I didn't know him personally. And, but I didn't expect to meet him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Next thing you know, we're in the least town hall and I'm thinking, fucking hell. Next thing you know, I've seen James Cook walk through. And that's why I call him. Who's he here for? Don't know. I thought, well, quick calculation. He's not Denzel's opponent. He's not such and such his opponent. He's not. That might be to be arranged. Mm. I've looked and I've seen this kid a bit shorter, stocky, bald head. Looked, looked all right. And I thought, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I said to our Colin, I did. I said to our Colin, I meant Colin, fucking hell. So I'll see what it is. I ain't got eight round in me to fucking dance around with him. You know, it's, um, listen. I'm going for a three round fucking war, mate. And if I give him it, cool. If I get it, pff, such is life. But I'm not going down. I'm not going to fucking try and run away for eight rounds and score it on points and that because I ain't got the energy to yeah, do it. Got on your shield. I'm going, yeah, I'm going yeah. to give it. And we had a, listen, I've never seen the fight. Yeah. I've never seen the fight, but I've got it here in my mind's eye. You know what I mean? I remember saying to him, because um, when he was fucking beating me up, <laughs> no, because we ended yeah. up having a good two rounds. And then he caught me with a shot. And as soon as that first bell went, Liam, my energy levels were going yeah. already. Anyway, so I thought, right, so we had a good... Mate, that is an awful, awful feeling when you know you've got someone in front of you who's 100% ready. Because I've done it a few times where I've, I've had a lot have of fights. Have you pulled it out? I've had have you pulled it out as I've, well? I've, yeah, and, it's, yeah. and I've hated myself. I've, done, yeah. I've had a couple of fights where I've been sort of injured and I haven't trained for my fight. I should probably shouldn't fight. Mm. Fuck it, I'll do it anyway. And I've got in there and it's not an enjoy. I love fighting. I love being in the mm. ring. And when you're 100% fit mm. and you, you can trust your body... Yeah. I've had a few fights where I've hated every second of it. And there have been a few where I've got battered and I mm. thought, just take me beating, fuck it. I'm, I've made my bed, I better lie in it now. Listen, you let, me tell I mean? you a story, let me tell you a story, all right? I boxed a kid called Bruce Scott. Never meant to box him. Should have never boxed him in this world. Mm. Cruiserweight, boxed Johnny Nelson for world title and this, that and the other. So I'm like that. I just boxed Joe Kalazagi and I got stopped in four and a half rounds and that, this, that and the other. To be fair, Joe, um, Mickey Duff wanted me killed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I say killed, he wanted me beat up in such a way that... Yeah. Um, some losses you can't come back from yeah. because people have already got it in the mind that damaged goods um, whereas if you give half a decent go and you may or may not have been in 100% condition they might know and they'll say fair play it didn't do bad for six, for whatever mm -hmm. so many days notice whatever you know what I mean so I'd, I'd boxed um, Joe Kalazag and fortunately I'd given a credible performance yeah. and that one that I'm quite happy with to say whatever didn't box for another 12 months, I think it was. I got frozen out because I was supposed I was with Mickey Duff, got my contract back from Mickey Duff, and then I got frozen out. And it was only frozen out because Mickey Duff ran everything. He was mm. like Eddie Hearn. Yeah, he ran yeah. everything. So there were loads of people who were associated with Mickey Duff who were saying to me, Nick, I'll manage you. So I said, well, what platform am I gonna, am I gonna fight on? So national promotions. So that's Mickey Duff. Mm. So he's in charge again, so I might as well go back to him. No good to yeah. me. So anyway, I said I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna go there. And also, one of the things that I loved is that in my own personal script, if anybody ever says to me, who were your manager? Mickey Duff. Oh, what happened when you left him? I didn't get another manager. I got a promoter, somebody just to promote me. But yeah. as far as I'm concerned, I had the best manager in Europe or mm. in this part of the world at the time. Um, so it's not bad on my CV, Mickey Duff, bang. Done. Yeah. So the anyway, next thing you know, I think it was 12, 15 months, I get a phone call. Do you want to fight? It's a fucking right, I do. Of course mm. I want to fight. I'm fucking meant to be a boxer. I haven't boxed for ages. Uh, Bruce Scott, London. So I'm like, no problem. Didn't even fucking think about it. Look up Bruce Scott. Killer. Yeah. <laughs> banger, yeah. banger, banger. Seriously, serious, serious guy. Banger. He, he's the same fella who, years ago, he boxed Nicky Piper and had said, listen, Nicky Piper beats me. I'll put a, I'll put a gun to my head and die. Yeah. And it wouldn't... Listen, we actually believed him. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm glad he didn't. You know what I mean? But and I think he lost to Nicky Piper, but um incredible fighter, good mm. fighter. So I've gone so remember Sharky, Leroy yeah, yeah. Brown? Yeah, yeah. yeah, lovely fella. Um else everybody. Yeah. So um with me not being managed that at that time, I got the phone call and I went, Listen, Sharky, will you come down to London with us in that corner me and this and that and the other said, fair enough. So we've gone down to um London, York Old Beth and Old Green, stood up outside. Sees this little entourage walking in, looks, and there's this fella. And I'd, honestly, he was like an English Mike Tyson. He had, he was like that, and he looked mean. Yeah. And I said to him, now I knew that I'd were going down as some kind of sacrificial lamb yeah. to whoever this Bruce Scott fella was. 
So I've gone like that. Um, I said to Sharky, so Sharky, here, listen, regardless of what happens tonight with our fight, got to watch him. He looks fucking tasty. And anyway, so he's like, yeah, yeah. So look at the size of that. So anyway, got in the thing. Next thing you know, I'm in the ring. <sighs> Thinking, right. And I'll say it as it is, I thought, you know what? That Mickey Duff's trying to get me done in. I'll tell you what, it's the first time that fella even looks like he's giving me half a shot, I'm going to take a fucking knee. And I admit, that's mm. the first and only time that I'd ever thought, you know what, let me set this money and fuck off, yeah. excuse my language. Yeah. And um, I'm glad I didn't. Yeah. Because it would have affected me today. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It would have done. But yeah. I thought, the way that boxing's treating me, let me get that money, I'll take a knee. Mm. Anyway, next thing you know, I is. Du, 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 living in a gangster paradise. You know that one? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like that. So this is int- entrance to music for this opponent of mine. So I'm looking around. I've gone like that. Oh, why? The money and the power, the power and the glo- mm. And I've looked over and there's him. That same fella, don't step. You know, look like Mike Tyson. Yeah. I'm th- so I'm looking around thinking, is the two rings in here? Because <laughs> I can't be fighting him. You know what I mean? Listen, the bull. He's turned around. He's got in the ring, turned around, and just pointed at me. And with him pointing at me like that, I thought, you know what, fuck you, you cheeky cunt. Yeah. Me and his We're wife have it. a fight, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we had a fight and that, and um, I, I run out of steam after five rounds and that, and he would try to have a go and that, um, and they give it him, which is fair enough, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I'm glad that I stayed on my feet, I'm glad that Like I you said, then it would have, you wouldn't have been able to look yourself in the mirror if you'd no. just not now. that, would you? Do you know what no, I mean? No, yeah, so, yeah. see, it's one thing I'll always try and do. I'm straight, I'm truthful. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like um when I talk to the fighters, when I talk to them, I talk to them from a position of truth. Yeah. Um, whether I've won, lost or drawn, I tell the truth to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? I say to them, listen, I'll tell you what, there's been times the reason why I train you so hard is because there's been so many times when there's I've boxed kids who I think I could have done a lot better against if I'd have been fitter. Yeah. I'll, that's yeah, all I'll say. Okay. You know what I mean? I want to come on to that now, Nick, as you, you as a trainer, because obviously you've been heavily involved in Josh's career yeah. and watched him get to the, mm. the world title level mm. and stuff like that. How, how did that come around with you working with Josh and going through the, those ranks with him? And how's that journey been? I've known, it's been great. I've yeah. known um, I've known Josh for years. I've known him since we were about eight. Yeah. You know what I mean? He used to be up at Star. We, yeah, yeah. You know, little kids running about, you know what I mean? Um, mm. Anyway, I'd always said to I'd always said to Sean, because Sean, one, one time Sean says to me, he says, oh, Nick, fucking hell, it's a bit, Shitty in this 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 lead lead scene is a bit shitty. They're a bit the, the coaches when they get the lads, they want to claim them for their own, and they don't want you nobody involved in this. Now says, listen, best thing you can do is your child, it's your responsibility, and whatever he does in boxing, you and him is going to have to sit down with each other. Whether when you're seventy years old and he's gonna either going to blame you or he's going to thank you. Yeah. So what I'd say to you is, I'd do what you want to do, and wherever you go. Wherever you send him, wherever you take him, you'll be with him. Mm. And if anything, watch what's been done. Because if it all goes wrong, you can always reproduce that yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't trust these fuckers because at the end of the day, they're not their kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're yeah. not their kids. That's right, yeah. Um so anyway, next thing you know, years later, I'm at Hull and um I was training a guy called Harry Matthews. Mm. And um he got offered a fight with Chris Eubanks Jr. Upon he had to beat this other kid though to get it. So Harry's like, oh, what do you reckon? So I says, listen, I'll tell you what it is, um, they're, they're wanting you as a lamb for slaughter, let's beat this kid first. So we've, I've boxed, um, we've boxed in Hull, everything's cool. We won the fight, next thing you know, Sean's come to me, he's come to the gym. He says, oh, we've seen now you've worked with Harry and that. We'd like you to join our team. J- Josh had just won the Commonwealth title. Mm. Um, and Sean, I don't think, really had a team that he could solidly rely on. So um, I was like, okay, you tell me, what is it that you want me for? So they said, we like how you got him with his defence and that, and you work on defence and you work on body and that, you know what I mean? And you're pretty strict. Mm. And I was like, oh, and you're all right, you've got experience and that, and you know, it's a good enough reason. Yeah, mm. cool, I let's mean. do it. I said, but I'll tell you what it is. Are you looking for, are you looking to box in front of four or five hundred people in that um, Ellen Road banqueting suite or are you looking to take over at World like mm. uh, looking to take over at World that'll do me then yeah. so I'll tell you what it is then Josh you do you do something that not a lot of the other Leeds fighters have done what's that stay clean mm. don't be drinking protect sorry protect your image yep protect your image because I'll tell you something from where we're from if everybody sees you doing the same as what they're doing why the fuck would they 
waste their money back in you. Yep. Show them something different. You show them, give them something to turn around and look up to and say, we'll follow him because we all love a night out. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Right? And so look and at it now. And, look at it. and you know what? Look at him over the years. Yeah. You don't see him with beer and hanging out of him and this, that and the other, or off his tits or this, that and the other. You see him doing his job, doing his job, doing his job. And that's why people respect that. Yep. You know what I mean? I think, good on you. Um, yeah, yeah. It's been a fantastic, listen to this. Can you imagine going to Manchester? Remember when we boxed Frampton? Oh, I love that. We, we all went over our ringside for that with uh, my uncle and a few it's, friends, mate. What a night that was. Oh, I'm just, and that, just I wasn't sure again. because the fight before with Selby, yeah. and I wasn't sure how we were going to be in Manchester, but mm. because it was the first time I'd seen him box outside of Leeds, yeah. and I was like, fuck it. He was like, but just in Leeds Arena. Like Leeds, it was yeah, it was unbelievable yeah. atmosphere. I come it, out. And I'll tell you what, that first round when he fucking nearly flattened Frampton as well, what the atmosphere, Listen, then the roof I came couldn't off. breathe. I couldn't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, just, I'd just come downstairs and I'd said to him, right. Tricky time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> and thingy just went, thump. Yeah. And I'd got that, uh, 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 <laughs> fucking move. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? And they're brilliant. But you know what? For me, I'd come out, um, I'd, um, like, don't get me wrong, Sean's always the number one. He's the man in charge, okay? Always the number one. He's the one that he's got a good brain on him. You yeah. know what I mean? Honestly, he's got a good brain on tactical and this, that, and the other. I've gone out into the... Um, in MEN, into thing, just to see it, lads, and say thanks for coming, this, that, and the other. And I always say, listen, do us a favour. There might be times with the quality of opponent that we've got, there might be times when they're having success. Mm. Don't just shout when we're having success. Yeah, yeah. Shout all fucking night. Yeah, <laughs> you know I mean, keep 100%. the noise, keep the noise, because I'll tell you something, psychologically, if you cheer just when we're getting success and go quiet when we're not, that can play yeah, tricks in your mind and that, mm. you know what I mean? So, like that, so they were like, that. Nick, is he ready? Is he think? I say, hey, listen, you don't worry about us, you know what I mean? Yeah. Are you ready? You know what I mean? Are you ready to make noise? So I'll tell you, it is Frampton's all right, isn't he? Yeah, mm. well, I'll tell you, it is if he gets any success, don't think that's the end of the story, you know what I mean? Because I'll tell you something, we're here to fight for you, you make the fucking noise, and we'll give you something to make noise for, yeah. you know what I mean? I'll tell you what, one of the proudest moments I've ever had. As a Leeds lad, you know, we don't usually go to Manchester and yeah, get fuck yeah. all, nothing, yeah. you know what I mean? We usually, yeah, we yeah, always. Yeah give a good account of ourselves and come home with his tails between his yeah. legs. Could have been, would have been, should have been. But you know something that night? Fuck. Yeah, we were, that was brilliant that night. And to yeah. do it back to back from Selby and Frampton mm. when he got rid off in both those, mm. didn't they? No one thought he was going to beat Selby. No. Uh, everything I read about him, no, he ain't, ain't going to beat Selby. And then when it came to Frampton, oh, uh, fair uh, enough, he beat Selby, but Selby were this and that. But Frampton, he ain't going to beat Frampton. Then he wiped the floor with Frampton. They were two massive, massive nights then for, we had some like great, I say, yeah. We had yeah. some great occasions, you know, just, just being in there and just handle it yeah um just say for example um in the build-up to that um frampton one they tried to tell us that we couldn't wear scarves um josh couldn't wear his lead scarf and this that and the other why well, that's what i said, yeah, we'll said my, yeah. just one second my friend <laughs> <laughs> did you stop ricky hatton from calling his colours and wearing his yeah. scarves. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll tell you what it is. Without this world champion here, you <laughs> don't have a fight. So what I suggest you do is go fuck off and do your job. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what it is. Um, okay, let's call it this way. We're keeping that scarf on because what we don't want is any infections when they're going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you know, when they're stood toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah. So that's for infection purposes. I'll come out of the room. You know what I mean? And sometimes mm -hmm. what you've got to remember is um, they'll play kidology for their benefit. Yeah. But we've got to have people in within, our, within our team who will recognise that and say, yeah, listen, and bounce something back. You know what I mean? Some great, ex honestly, great experience. Like the, with the sheep, with the Selby thing. Yeah, that was yeah. just a wind up, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, listen, them, the Welsh are lovely people, you know what I mean? They're the ones who's been sheep shaggers for years. Yeah, that, you know what I mean? So yeah. at the end of the day, why won't we say that just yeah. to wind them up? And then, <laughs> honestly, I love the press conference in the build up to that. To be fair, he, play, he, did it, he took it well, Selby. Oh, he did. And he gave it back. He did, as well. he did. I remember at press conference, <laughs> one of my mates shouted something to him and fucking Selby just ruined him. Ruined him. him. And he went, <laughs> oh, he was good. He, 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 listen, I went, well, that didn't go as planned. Did it, you dickhead? Yeah. Head. You know what I mean? You brought attention to us. You're not yeah. ready. You know what I mean? You didn't even have an answer. You know what I mean? They got me. You know what I mean? They got me. I did this thing where I was going, um, I said to him, well, how many are you bringing? Like, you know what I mean? And you know that, that on that like Facebook thing, you might get 30 seconds or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I timed it wrong, and I? So I've gone like that. And he says, oh, I says, how many, how many people are you bringing? Like, he went, a few. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like two. Yeah. And then um, he went, oh, anyway, I'm going to do to, I'm going to do to him what Joe Kalazagi did to you. Yeah, did he? That yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just about to go, 
uh, and it, it went off. off. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, Bastard. you know, yeah, but I still put it up. Yeah. Because I yeah. thought, you know what? Like you said, what do you say? One shot, bang. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Listen, if it is, it is. Yeah. It, and I thought, Bastard, what are we going to say? What? Well, I never had six. Uh, um, Josh hasn't had six days' notice, has he? So he's going to fuck you up proper. You know? Yeah. yeah, and yeah. But it didn't happen. Yeah, so. Yeah. I let it go, um, but fair play to him. But yeah. you know what it is? Like I've, um, you, what you've got to remember as well. That old saying: "The king is dead, long live the king." Yeah. Um, you can only, you can't be champion forever, mate. You know what I mean? But what you can do is you can leave a legacy. Yeah. Now, yeah. as regards Josh, I think Josh has got a. If everything's good, I think Josh could be a three-time world champion, mate. Yeah. Because it's within him. One hundred percent. It's within him, him and yep. it's just a matter of getting all the little things in order, all the preparations, so that he can have. A fantastic camp. Yeah. But what you've also got to remember, pardon me, remember his um, youth. Yeah. Yeah. These All these kids, um, some of these kids that he's fighting are all 22, 23 yeah. and that, and they've got the That's the only thing you can't fight. Can't fight. You can't fight. And can't. it's a shame because I'm doing it myself. I mean, I'm like, <laughs> my body fails me. And I'm like, my fucking you're looking knees. Yeah, I'm right. me. I, feel, oh. I feel all right. I'm strong. But my knee's gone. Fuck. But, it, oh. you know, I with all this nutrition, sports science, and like you said, he's lived clean. It's definitely not out of his grasp. It's within him. Yeah, 100%. Right, we haven't got long left here, so I want to go on to your book. Oh. Yeah, so you are writing a book, are you? Talk to us about that, mate. Got, what it is, is um, with the experiences that I've I've had from living in Gibson, from having times when I was a little bit of a... Um, tear away. A tear away, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Um, there are some interesting stories. Um, there's some great... I say it myself... Incredulous stories, great stories, good stories. Listen, um, uh, but by we because we haven't got long, but I do want you. I want to go to that police story that's going to be in the book. Can we talk about that when you yeah. got attacked by the dogs? Just talk to us about that. What I'll say is, um, if it's allegedly, 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 yeah. allegedly, allegedly, right? Then allegedly, what happened was, um, it was a birthday, and I'd been out with a certain young lady and that, and we'd been to meet friends and that, and then uh, well, first time she was going to meet the friends and that, and you know what. She made a bit of a cunt of us. Mm. Not, she was just trying to prove that she was in control of the, re the relationship anyway. But I wasn't happy with it, so I said, I'll tell you what we've done. And we've gone home, had a little bit of an argument. Somebody's called police. But by the time police come, I'm outside by my van and I got what I needed to get and I'm out by the van. So the police have come up the road and they've gone, what's happening? Excuse me? What's happening? So what are you talking about? And I was just playing the deafen. Mm. Like, I ain't got a clue what you're on about. And they were just about to go, and she came to the door, she went, that bastard, him. Yeah. <laughs> fucking <laughs> hell. That fucking bastard. hell. I thought, oh dear. So they've got out and they've gone, um, one of them's gone to talk to her, one of them's come to talk to me, and I've said to him, listen, to be fair, in two seconds time, because I've done no wrong, your officer's probably gonna come out and tell me to go home. You know what I mean? Because that's what they used to do with yeah. domestic thing is that they say, listen, you go home. You know what I mean? So anyway, next thing you know, he went, no. I went, please. And I was demoralised. I was, I, was, I was fucked. I was totally devastated because I don't like the fact that I'd been embarrassed. Or oh, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, next thing you know, he's done something, he's done something. And for whatever reason, he ended up asleep on the floor, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I've gone because I thought, well, if this has happened, this is not where I want to be, yeah. so to speak. So I've fucked off. Anyway, I went. I was going to go to my friend. I won't give his name, but I was going to go to my friend, get some money and go down the road and just lay low for a bit. Mm. I took a wrong turning. So next thing you know, that wrong turning meant that I had to go about two mile round to get where I was going. While I was doing that, boom, blues and tools, police all over. You know what I mean? They've seen, they've seen the van and then bang. And so they've chased me on motorway it was like fucking Felma and Louise. You know, have you seen <laughs> yeah, Felma and Louise? Yeah, yeah. And you know some only had wing mirrors, wing mirrors, but they were just full of blue. They had helicopter out and everything, you know what I mean? Because apparently this fella was asleep, you know, the policeman was asleep, unfortunately. So anyway, they've chased me up the motorway, back into Leeds. <laughs> you know, <I> mean, <laughs> full like circle, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've ended up by um I've ended up thinking, right, fuck this, I'm gonna get a right kick in here. So I've gone back up um Garton Road, I think it is named Winston's, that one by Winston's, gone back up there. Come off from walkway, gone back up that road, and I thought, oh shit. And it was just full of police and ambulances and this, that, and the other. I thought, fuck that, I don't think now's the time to give myself up. So I took a sly one up a side street, over path, and this, that, and the other. Joy, bit of bad ride, bad mm. driving. And I've come round this corner, and I'm face to face like this to you with a taxi fella. Mm. And I thought, I'll tell you what, if I touch him, if I touch that in with the car, that's when I can get nicked for something. Yeah. You know, I'm up to now, I'm just running from the police because um, only other week, fucking Rodney King got beat up and I don't want none of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So next yeah. thing you know, 
I've slammed on, missed him. Next thing you know, someone's hit me from behind, police car. So I've just got out of car and done a runner. Run around the streets, and I've come back onto Dewsbury Road, and it was just full of police. Mm-hmm. Well, you know Dewsbury Road, you yeah, know where yeah. the police station is? Yeah. Yeah, it was just opposite, at the end of that road there. So it was full of police. If I say 60, I'm saying 60 because I don't want to exaggerate. <laughs> when they say man down, when they say man down, all the police all drop in. everything, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I'm there, I'm thought, oof. And I swear to God, Liam, you know what I thought? A few ticket sales here, I'll be fighting. Because I'm, like, I'm fighting soon. Yeah. You know, and I thought, oh, a few ticket sales there. Well, I forgot the fella that were chasing me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm like, boom, and my legs have gone. He's rugby tackled me, I'm on the floor. So I thought, oh, fucking hell. I thought, the fucking thick cunt. I forgot that we're getting chased. Yeah. Because you know, I thought, like, so the next thing you know, I'm on the floor and they've given me a proper kicking. Yeah. You know I mean? But I thought, I stand for that. You know what I mean? Because two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah. So give me a kicking, give me a kicking. So I thought, oh, that's it. Next thing you know, CS, gas, pepper spray, everything. My fucking face were pink, mate. Mm. You know what I mean? So anyway, next thing you know, I've got these plastic, they've got these plastic handcuffs on me. Them plastic zip tie handcuffs yeah, on me. Yeah. So anyway, I'm on the floor. So next thing you know, and I swear to God, they're on my fucking neck. And I felt my neck, I felt my forehead in the ground. And I had, I had traps and that, and I had, I had my hands behind my back, and I had to turn around and tense my trap and pull my neck in, mm. pull my head in. And I swear to God, I heard my, my vertebrae in my neck crunching, oh, yeah. and I could hear it in my ears. And I'm like, fucking hell. So then the next thing you know, I don't know how it happened, but I got God's strength. But next thing you know, my hands were free, mate. <laughs> no, because yeah, yeah. they were thinking behind my back, and they were on me. One more on my legs, one more on my hip, and one more on my head. You know, and I was. But I were like, you know that, um, what's it called when you tense up? You just tense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dynamic tension kind yeah, of thing, yeah. yeah. And I were like that, and I'm thinking, fucking hell. I'm thinking, don't fucking scream, because that's all they want you to do, make noise and that. You know, they like you to make noise and that. So anyway, next thing you know, I'm tense, 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 tense. Next thing you know, ping, my hands are free. And they've just jumped up, the shit. They just jumped up and yeah. jumped back. But they put two dogs on me, didn't they? Oh, mm. fucking hell, I was flapping like a yeah. fish. I was like, and I hate dogs, I was scared <laughs> of dogs, honestly. Yeah. I was, listen, I'm sweating thinking about them. Two big Alsatians, Oscar, PD Oscar, you yeah. were called. So, anyway, <laughs> so it's it, one of them's locked on my leg, and I'm flapping like a fish like that. And I'm thinking, Jesus Christ. Anyway, they're both, and anyway, I've, I've sort of like half booted one away, and it's gone. But the other one's just locked on my leg. Yeah. And they'd already been chewing at my leg already, you know what I mean? But locked on my leg. So, I've gone like that. So, imagine I've got the top of it and the bottom of it and open its thing but I'm locked look where my hands are yeah. I'm locked and I've had to let go of the dog and it's just got I had to put my hand in its in its mouth to stop it from getting me and I've still got in the middle of my hand mm-hmm. you know what I mean I can see that there yeah and I had to go like that I grabbed it and I've gone gone like that and I just opened its mouth and I heard it going ah, it started crying you know what I mean so yeah. I'm thinking and it, well that that got me out of like not rage but you know like that yeah, f- yeah. fucking hell I'm getting and I, I heard it screaming. And I remember the fellow, God bless him, FB. And he got done for shooting a, a dog mm. in Blackpool. And he, he didn't get out, he didn't get no for robbery, we got it all for doing dog. Yeah, yeah. And I always remember that. And um, I thought, fuck it. Listen, with all these here, they can't, with all these here, there's not every one of them gonna turn around and justify what's happened to me. Mm. So anyway, and this was the same year as Rodney King, yeah, yeah, honestly, and you know what happened? The couple were, the policemen were asleep for three days, and they kept on coming and saying, "Hey, what have you hitting me? What have you hitting me?" I ain't touched nobody. Yeah. I ain't hit nobody. Saying, "What? Well, listen, what have you hitting me?" This, I'm saying, well, what, "What's wrong with him? He's fucking still asleep. We don't know." You know what I mean? So next thing you know, I ended up on remand again, and um, Section 18 would do with. Well, initially they didn't know what to charge yeah. with. And then they put me, when he woke up, they put me in on, on remand, section 18 wounding with intent. And they were really trying to get me. And for one split second, I said to my family, I'd better say that I just blacked out. Yeah. Because um, and they went, are you crazy? A black man who blacked out? <laughs> 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 Listen, you're yeah. going to end up in fucking a mental asylum. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Anyway, cut long story short, they came to me and they said, look, we know what happened to you wasn't right. But what you were accused of isn't right either. If you take a driving offence, dangerous driving, we'll forget about everything else and we'll call it a draw. Mm. Because at that point in time, it was quite, um, it would have been, I would the word, not political, but. It, it, is a little bit, it is a little bit though, isn't it? Because yeah, that were a fucking. That were bang yeah, out of order, yeah. mate. You know, when I think of it now, yeah, bang out of order. Yeah. But when I think of it then, listen, I might have done something. Yeah. They might have done something. 
Let's call it a draw, nobody yeah, goes yeah. to jail. Because, you know, something like yeah. that. But so what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to, from my own point of view, I've had a fantastic journey, mate. You know, from from where I was and where we was destined to end up. Yeah. For me to be able to have um, turned my life around, um, I think that, I'll tell you what I do love. I love that when I'm in and around um, Leeds, the amount of people that I know, because I go all over, I've got all over as a kid, the amount of people that I know and who turn around and come and say, nice one, Nick, and they yeah. come and, and they speak to me with respect and they trust me with the children and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. That, I, that I have to turn around and say, well, you know what? Thank you. Because yeah. the only reason why, the main reason why I made that gym and got a gym wasn't to produce champions. Mm. It wasn't to, to, it, it, it to, to give the, us yeah. what we never had. Because we never had a we youth a club. Back, yeah. Our youth club were the street. Yeah. And sometimes on the street, that's where things go wrong. Yeah. Whereas if you've got somewhere to go in a nice environment and that um, somewhere where you're trusted, I'll never turn around and tell you to take drugs. I'll never tell you to sell drugs. I'll never tell you to beat him up. Mm. I'll tell you to walk away. Yeah. I'll turn around and say to these lads, hey, listen, one of the reasons why you get fit is so you can fucking run. Yeah. I say, I'll tell you what it is, if it comes on top, you know, you're supposed to be able to, if, if anything comes on top, you're supposed to be able to turn around and take two steps away and run. Yeah. And you know what? If he catches you, then you can turn around and chin him. Mm. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. No, but the think, think, yeah, well, um, I'm just, um, I'm I'm down for the kids and that. Yeah, like I yeah. say, um, I don't want to waffle on. When I see gentlemen like you coming through and I think to myself, you come from the same shit all I have and you've excelled. Mm. Fair play to you, you know what I mean? And um, at the end of the day, being a world champion and that, and the things that you've done, let me tell you something, don't think that people don't look at you, Liam, because there's loads of kids out there that love you to death and they love the fact that you've still got a character, yeah. still got personality, you're still humble. That's mm. the thing, you're still, yeah, you've honestly, got to be. You got to listen, be. humble. Yeah. Listen, I turn around and I turn around and say all the time, I, I champion you like I champion Josh. Mm. And I turn around and go, you know what? It's nice that them kids can have somebody to look at and turn around and say, you know something, you don't necessarily have to do everything that everybody else is doing yeah. um, just to get by, you, to be the popular kid. Mm. Sometimes you've got to be unpopular to do what you've got to do and get on with what you've got to do. 100%. So, mate, this book is going to have all sorts of stories in there. It's going to have all your journey. It's going to be about how you're helping people now, mm. your gym, your boxing career, your early life, all the prison stories, etc. Now you've it's a redemption. Uh, turn yeah, around. turn it round, man. Yeah, Listen, yeah. as a black man, as a black man in all them jails, <laughs> boy, it was scary. Yeah. <laughs> it was scary. So, when is the book going to be out? And They're what? saying about April. Perfect. They're saying April, which I think so, is a good one. So look out for that. Before we finish, because I can't believe how fast that's gone, we've got a couple of minutes. There's some trending topics, and I want to speak on, to you quick. about Let's, this Connor ben, Connor ben Egg situation. Now, this is absolutely fucking ridiculous in, in my mind. Because you've got someone like Josh, who you've watched the most tested athlete fucking boxer. Every in 10 the, minutes is getting he gets test. tested regularly, yeah. doesn't he? Jesus and then he's Christ. come along, he's failed two tests, and then all of a sudden it's because he's had too many eggs. What are your thoughts on this, mate? Bullshit, mate. Yeah. Bullshit. Listen, I'll tell you what it is. This is the and this is the thing with society nowadays. If you can pass a little test or you know, if 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 that document says the right words, it's fact. You shouldn't need it's to have all these bullshit. lawyers That's working. If you're clean, why do you need all these lawyers going through all this shit and doing all these underhand tactics and all that? You if you're clean, I'm just you, pass the fucking test. The apple don't fall far from the tree. Yeah, oh yeah, I've heard Simple. that. Yeah. And I'll tell you, is when we were kids, that's why people used to ask me why, um, people used to ask me why, uh, how can you're uh, Eubanks and you're not um, Ben? Mm. Eubanks is straight. Yeah. I like Eubanks. He don't talk shit. You don't act the hard, man. You don't fucking eyes was probably going to try and chim him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out here. Have you seen him? Yeah, listen. Yeah. Have you seen hands on him? Mate. Listen. A, yeah, like shovels, aren't they, mate? And they're like fucking bricks. He can still eat up. He's yeah. Not still, he's, comes, like, he's, he's still an angry 60, bastard. Yeah, he's, he's fucking angry as fucking. Yeah. You know, listen, he's like, fucking what? He's saying that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and you're like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but no, listen. I was, I... Over the last two years, I've actually become a Nigel Ben fan yeah. because I've always been a Eubanks man. You know what I mean? Because you know what? Because Eubanks isn't a hard man. He's a good athlete. Yeah, yeah. And he's a good fighter and he's a good warrior. Whereas um, Ben is everything about yeah. being a hard man. Yeah. He's a hard man, a tough man, techno shit, fucking he's talk it as it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's got that. Whereas that I like the, I really like the articulation yeah, and yeah. the... Bullshit. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, Parliamentary yes. procedure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Listen, I love that. You yeah. know what I mean? I used to say to um, Henry Wharton as well, um, just to quick go back again, I used to say, listen, 
you like Nigel Ben too much. What you need to do is take ten percent of that and store it away because I'll tell you something, you've got a chance to fight him. Yeah. And what you don't want to be doing when you fight him is turn around and stuck in the headlights going, yeah. oh, <laughs> Nigel Ben. Yeah, and that's yeah. what he did. Mm. Four rounds down yeah. and then he started to fight. You know yeah. what I mean? Which is such a shame, but um, history is history. i I'm banger, I'm bang against drugs in yeah. sport. I'm bang against drugs in sport. And anybody, listen, if you've got that in your system, you're a fucking cheat. Yeah. There's no Simple. excuse for that to be Simple. in the system. Listen, do you know what it is? You know this boxing, you know what it's supposed to be fundamentally? Mm. Two men in a pair of shorts with pads on their hands to stop the um, knuckles getting cut so they can fight a bit yeah. longer and have a drink of water, get on with it. Yeah. And you know what? For anybody, anybody to try and cheat, mm. not worth shit in my eyes. Um, Audible. Yeah, for me, there's no, there's no way there's out. No, no, I, I, there's no, a, nobody can justify it. Nobody can WBC defend it. And the WBC are saying, oh, he can still fight. But even, and he's giving it big and saying, I'm ordering an apology. Why? The British Boxing Board of Control aren't reinstated him up there. He still can't fight on a show in England as things stand. And he's going on like he's passed. But WBC, it is what it is. It? Right, we've got two minutes. Last trending topic. What do you reckon to all these YouTube things that's going on in a minute? Absolutely fantastic. It's getting eyes on the Absolutely spot. I keep fantastic. telling people this. Jake Paul. Do you know what? Jake Paul, I thought, did all right. Did all right he's only been know. training for about four did years. All right. Listen, to fight someone who's been boxing his entire life he's had an amateur career is that he's fought as a pro and people are saying he can't fight a real boxer can't Jake Paul he Liam, did alright mate what's the game about what boxing getting hit and not hitting and not getting hit fuck all I'll do with it what making money there that's you go. What it's yeah, about. yeah, yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah, you go. It's about yeah. money. Listen, you know what, what I mean? thirty million or he's something. Just, he just generated. He's just, and look how many eyes he's getting on it. Tommy, what's his name? Tommy Fury. Yeah. Is just answer me a question now. Every single boxer who's got his dad, um, who's got a trainer as a dad. They're making money. Yeah. Right. And all you're doing is you're turning around saying, whatever reputation I might have had, I'm hoping that you might um, look favourably favorably, favorably upon my son. And in doing so, you'll give him a chance, put your eyes on him, eyes make money. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll tell you what it is. There's not a boxer on this planet who's who hasn't made it already, yeah. who wouldn't fight for that opportunity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's what it's all Imagine about. Imagine having eight fights and your ninth fight is you get fucking, fucking five, six million quid or whatever it is. And it's any of them, you know something, there's some of the old school boxing purists who are, are livid with it, and I understand yeah. that. I understand that. But if that's the case, let's have another league. And it, yeah, let's and have it, a clean all, league. It, what it, yeah. it's also doing as well is it's getting all these young kids who fit, who they, they follow Jake Paul. Do think, you, know, you know what, boxing, I've never really watched boxing before, but you know what, oh, I might go to the gym, I might get involved in it, might get no. a few people off the street, and you know what I mean? So, you know what the worst thing, though, is that I'm still mentally old school, but when these kids come in, um, some of them are like wet spaghetti, you know what I mean? And I've got to remember that, actually, because they'll come in with all the gear, yeah. fucking brand new gear, this, that, and the other, hundreds <laughs> yeah, of pounds with yeah. the gloves, and I'm like that. Still need, a bit, still need to have a bit about you. Yeah. 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 I turn around and say to them, I say, hey, listen, put these on. Try these on. No, don't put them on. Try these on. Mm. And they've got a normal pair of gloves. Yeah. And they say, oh, why did you do that? I says, because when everybody sees you in all that gear, they assume you can fight. Yeah, true, yeah. And when they, All the gear, no idea. It's yeah, the same for a reason, isn't it? it? Is, yeah. <laughs> so what you're better off doing is coming in humbly, learning your craft, and you might even turn around and say, they're aspiring. You know, fly gloves, 300 quid and yeah, all that, and you like yeah. that, and you like that. Hang on a minute. Show us your jab. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, but, um, I don't knock him, but um, I love anybody who can bring positive. Listen, yeah. that kid never did not wrong. Yeah, yeah. That Jake Paul's done not wrong. Mm. You know what I mean? It's at the end of the day, the only reason why he's got so much attention is because he's got so much attention. Yeah, of course. You know, I'm good on him. Yeah. Listen, I'm, have we got to go? Yeah, we've got, we've got to wrap okay. it up. Okay, yeah. listen, I'll tell you what it is. I thank you very much. This book is called Front, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Got to get through this. And if you think about it, a lot of our life, we have to front it to get through it. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking no, mate, to you. Mate, thank you for having it. Do you know what? Yeah, thank you, mate. We, I could have sat here for another hour easy, but obviously we've got yeah, some studio that. time and stuff like that. I've got circuit to do as but, well. You there know you go, I mean? mate. But no, I appreciate you coming on, mate. Look out for his book. And um, yeah, there'll be some there'll be some great stories in there. And mate, thank you Just for Just one time. more thing. Yep, go on. I'd like to say, listen, this isn't done to glorify violence or nothing like Listen, I love violence. I love snapping a finger or whatever. Don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. No, I love them gory films and yeah. that. You know, my missus are forever. She's like, oh, somebody's getting killed again. It's, like, it's only fun, isn't it? You know what I mean? But, and it's in men. It's yeah. in us as men. Yeah, you know what I mean? But at the same time, uncontrolled violence, I don't yeah. go for. I don't know if it's my age. You know what I mean? But what I turn around and say is, listen, this isn't done to glorify anything I've done in the past. Yeah. All it's done is to say, listen, the shit I've been through, and hopefully I've still got a good attitude towards life, good attitude towards people. Um, 
what you've done doesn't necessarily define what you can do. Yeah. You know, I mean, we can all change a corner. Um, there was a time, um, I've got friends, you've, you know, many friends who's, um, they've done drugs, they've stayed on drugs and they can't get out of that circle. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame. It's yeah. a great people. Yeah. But at the same time, what I turn around and say to them is, I invite a few of them, you know. Mm. I say, hey, listen, come and get on that exercise bike for 10 minutes. Come and do that. Do and do that. How did that feel? Yeah. Well, if you can do without that other gear, this gear, this gear yeah, yeah, will yeah. do you so much better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Listen, I'm mate. a waffler. Yeah, <laughs> mate, thank you very much. Respect. Massively appreciate it. Look out for his book. Man's boxing. Yeah. There's only one. There you go. Thank you for your time, mate. Respect.